don't have any sort of scientific background or degree of any sort. All I can offer is observations. But those observations are from soils that I'm, I'm just a year shy of 40 crops. So for you know, 39 years of, of working with the same soils uh, and observing the, the, the results and, and the soils themselves tells me that it's working. We're doing something right. We're in Norfolk County in the Sand, Sand Plains, Norfolk County, and, and if we go back enough years, as far as you could see here, um, was all tobacco, fumigated, heavily fumigated. And I dare say that, that in any of our the ground that we farm today, all the money in the world couldn't buy an earthworm. You had to go into the field and find an earthworm, you couldn't. Today we find earthworms. It's pretty close to 20 years that we started uh, seeing what different crop rotations would do for us and our potato crop. Striving for, uh, of course, like everyone, a higher yielding crop, a better quality crop. Watching your input costs. It started with uh, pearl millet here in our area and and it led to a lot of different things, but one, one of our favorites that we stuck to is mustard and arugula, uh, used as a biofumigant here. There's a couple different varieties of mustard in here. It's a little, little cocktail we, we've uh, worked on over the years, and we think it's like a one-two punch. So what we're doing here is setting a trap. We're actually using the mustard roots to bring the nematodes up into the, into the top layer of the earth. Now when they're in that top layer, we're hoping that they snack a little bit and they'll snack on uh, arugula root and that will, will hopefully kill them. And if it doesn't or they don't eat on that, we're going to incorporate the green mass of everything here and which will then uh, do the biofumigating. And then we'll follow this with a uh, crop of pearl millet, which is a great organic builder uh, feeds off the green manure crop from this and it's a non-host uh, for nematodes. We don't have the luxury of, of more than a two-year rotation with potato crop. Uh, we, we, don't, we're, we don't have that much land so if there's not potatoes here I don't have another crop here that I'm trying to profit from as far as what it's yielding and what I can sell it for. Maybe there should be with this year, I guess the price of corn and, and beans are higher. So maybe we should have been looking at these acres and going, oh, we could do this and we could try to net some profit. But then we'd get into tired soils, wouldn't we? Like you're always asking your soil to give, give, give. So what if we give the soil a chance to have a rest and we give to it? What we feel we gain on yield and quality more than pays for what the cost we put into the land when it doesn't have potatoes. Irrigation costs, you know, a huge amount of dollars to, to take water from our reservoirs and put it on the soil. So that's another thing we're doing here is the water holding capacity of the soil has, has improved and we notice that, that between irrigations our crop isn't suffering so to speak or lacking for moisture like it used to many years ago and then also um, occasionally we get too much rain and it also the the water going through this so if that makes any sense our water our soil holds moisture better but it also when we get too much of it it seems to like we got just about an inch and three quarters here within 24 hours ago and and we're out here and and we're in the ground and it's great, it's perfect. What does that mean for our potatoes? What does that mean for us who, who are growing the potatoes? And what does it mean for the consumer? And what does it mean for the next generation that perhaps wants to use the soil to keep growing potatoes or perhaps a different crop? And I think what that means is win, 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 win. It's positive for everybody. 